Noong mga 1960s hanggang mga 1970s, nagsimula ang maging very, very popular yung mga women's live movement, feminism. Although the ideas and concept of this began much, much earlier. Pero akala ng mga women of the 60s and the 70s ay napaka-modern na nila sa liberation. But nearly 2,500 years before that, a very strong woman named Queen Vashti went ahead of history and showed great strength. Ito pong ating pag-aaralan at nawaturuan tayo ng Panginoon ng very timely applications from the life of this remarkable woman. A woman ahead of her time. Thank you, Father, for freedom. Thank you for love that comes from you. Thank you for forgiveness and cleansing that we can enjoy. Patawarin niyo po kami sa mga kasalanan namin, Panginoon. Linisin kami at kami gawing karapat-dapat na humingi at tumanggap naman ng pagpapala mula sa inyo. We cleanse our hearts, O God, and make our hearts your domain, your kingdom, your throne. Take over, Father. Preside over this activity. Lead us. Teach us. May you heal our infirmities, especially spiritual and emotional ones. Buksan niyo po ang aming mga puso, ang aming kaisipan sa mga napapanahon at magagandang mga paglalapat ng katuruan sa Biblia. At daw ang aming pag-aaral, Panginoon, makatulong upang kami lalong lumaya, makalaya sa iyo para kami sumamba at ganun din naman, magawa ang mga ipinagagawa mo at hinahangad mong gawin ng bawat malalayang tao. Lord, lead us, be our speaker. Protect us from lies and falsehood. Protect us even from bad scholarship. And Lord, we pray that you will protect us from works of evil men and evil spirits. Protect our loved ones who are not with us right now. Give us your peace, your health, your strength, so that we may focus on your words. Father, be our speaker. We seek you and ask in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Esther 1, chapter 1, verses 1, 3 to 5. This is what happened during the time of Xerxes, who ruled over 127 provinces, stretching from India to Kush. In the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all his nobles and officials. The military leaders of Persia and Media, the princes, and the nobles of the provinces were present. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty. When these days were over, the king gave a banquet, lasting seven days, in the enclosed garden of the king's palace for all the people from the least to the greatest. Ang hari po noon ng napakalaking imperyo, napakalaking domain, maraming mga ibang kaharian na nasa ilalim niya, was King Xerxes. And he was presiding a very vast, powerful, and rich domain. At siya ay nagbigay na isang napakahabang fiesta, isang napakarangya na pagdiriwang. So there was a grand open house which was capped by a big festival. This was of course to inspire allies and to intimidate enemies. Ang pagpapakita po ng kayamanan ng mga hari, no, lalo nung unang panahon, mga palasyo, mga parada, ay hindi lang upang pasayahin ang kanilang mga kakampi, kundi upang takutin din ang kanilang mga kaaway o nagbabalak na umaway sa kanila. Esther 1.9 Queen Vashti also gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. So haba ang lahat ng kalalakihan ng mga opisyal ng buong imperyo ay nandoon sa piling ng hari, ang lahat naman ng mga maharlikang mga paraluma na ikasama ng reyna. Ang mga asawa, ang mga kapartner, ang mga consorts ng mga general na ito at mga gobernador. There was a separate event and venue for the ladies as was the tradition in the past. Esther 1, 10 to 12. On the seventh day, when King Xerxes was in high spirits from wine, he commanded the seven eunuchs who served him to bring before him Queen Vashti, wearing her royal crown, in order to display her beauty to the people and nobles, for she was lovely to look at. But when the attendants delivered the king's command, Queen Vashti refused to come. Then the king became very furious and burned with anger. Noong nalalasing na mga kalalakihan, dumarating na sa climax ang buong party, everybody was already losing self-control and putting down their guards, King Cersei suddenly was possessed by a wild idea to display his very beautiful wife before his male guests. 
So drunk Xerxes wanted to display Queen Vashti before his male guests. As the Bible says, she was lovely to look at. To everyone's horror, Queen Vashti refused. Pinatawag ang reyna ay pinatawag sa mga eunuchs. You know, eunuchs are very special men who serve the wife or wives of the monarch. These men are castrated at age 8 or 9, so they are not allowed to develop their maleness, and they will not become threats to the king or to the husbands of royal women because these are the men who serve those royal women, but they were castrated at an early age. So ipinatawag ang reyna at ang lahat ay nasindak, nagulat, hindi sukat akalain, unprecedented, tumanggi si Queen Vashti na lumipat doon sa kabilang bank banquet, na lumipat sa kabilang bulwagan at iparada siya sa makaharap ng mga kalalakihan ng mga lasing na. All the ladies, the wives of the king's guests, were in the ladies' court. Vashti wanted to remain there with the other women. Can you imagine the big conflict? But imagine this woman's resolve, her inner strength, her principle. She was not just standing up to a husband. She was standing up to the emperor and to the whole weight and power and might of the empire behind this man. Meanwhile, in the men's hall, all the men eagerly awaited her appearance because she was renowned for her beauty, for her remarkable beauty that was talk of the entire empire. So habang nananabik ang mga kalalakihan sa pagdating ng reyna, ang mga kababaihan naman dun sa kabilang bulwagan ay nangambang lahat dahil baka mamaya ipatawag din sila ng mga asawa nila at iparada din dahil pagandahan naman to ng asawa. You know, especially in the past and up to now, at some degrees, beautiful women were food for the gods. Esther 1, 13 to 15. Since it was customary for the king to consult experts in the matters of law and justice, he spoke with the wise men who understood the times and were closest to the king. The seven nobles of Persia and Media who had special access to the king and were highest in the kingdom. According to law, what must be done to Queen Vashti? He asked. She has not obeyed the command of King Xerxes that the eunuchs had taken to her. Ipinatawag ang pitong itinatangi at itinuturing na pinakamarurunong na mga tagapayo ng hari. At sabi, ano ang marapat gawin sa reyna sapagat hindi siya sumunod sa hari. Take note that the king consulted wise men. They were wise, but they were all men. And you must note also civilization and civility because the question was, according to law, what can be done? It was not just according to emotion, not just according to the mood of the time, but what was according to law. Esther 1, 16 to 18. When Memukan replied in the presence of the king and the nobles, Queen Vashti has done wrong, not only against the king, but also against all the nobles and the peoples of the provinces of King Xerxes. For the queen's conduct will become known to all the women, and so they will despise their husbands and say, King Xerxes commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him but she would not come. This very day, the Persian and Median women of the nobility who have heard about the queen's conduct will respond to all the king's nobles in the same way. There will be no end of disrespect and discord. So ano po ang napagkasundoan itong mga magigiting na mga lalaking nagtipon-tipon? Hindi siya dapat pamarisa ng mga asa-asawa natin. Nabalitaan ng buong imperyo ang ginawa ng emperatrice. You know, the empress, the queen, did not go to the king. Sabi, anong gagawin ng mga asawa ng lahat, ng mga maharlikang lalaki, mga general, mga gobernador, pag pinalampas natin ito? Hindi rin sila susunod sa atin. Magugulo ang mundo, mga nganibang sibilisasyon. Kailangang puksain ang ganito mga uri ng panganib. 
So Queen Vasti's behavior threatened the king, the nobles, the peoples of the empire. Sa kanila, yung nobles, yung peoples, men. Hindi kasali yung women sa bilang, no? dahil sila daw yung nanganib. Never mind that half of the so-called peoples were women. You don't normally pluralize people, but peoples meaning cultures, nations, various ethnicities. And they were concerned about the disrespect for men. Never mind the disrespect for women that they wanted to do, to parade Queen Vashti before drunken men. And they said there was going to be discord, gulo. And what did discord mean? Women refusing to be paraded before men. Women refusing to become sex objects or just mere objects of curiosity. You must know that it was a one-sided, a men-friendly legal system and a men-friendly tradition. Usually, Bible teachers would demonize Vashti's actions. But I find no justification for that in the text. The Bible did not pass judgment on Queen Vashti's behavior. It just reported the event. In fact, it was Memo Khan, one of the lead advisors, who passed the judgment and everyone just agreed. Esther 1, 19 to 20. Ang panukala ng mga magi noon na nagsipagtipon-tipon. Therefore, if it pleases the king, let him issue a royal decree and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Media, which cannot be repealed, that Vashti is never again to enter the presence of King Xerxes. Also, let the king give her royal proposition to someone else who is better than she. Then when the king's edict is proclaimed throughout all his vast realm, all the women will respect their husbands from the least to the greatest. So these male advisors gave the male monarch, the king, and the male lawmakers and the male law interpreters took the day. Now let's take a look at the tradition of the harem. The harem was where the major real head queen presided. It was peopled by many women. In Solomon's times, thousands of women. This harem was not unique to Israel. Even in China, the emperor had thousands of wives and concubines that each had rooms in the 9,999 and one-half rooms of the forbidden city. These women are collected from every village and town. There's a sort of a beauty contest that happens whenever there's a recruitment happening. And all the most and the best and the most beautiful women are taken to the palace, screened, arranged, rearranged, beautified, and presented to the king. And then after a rigorous examination, they become part of the harem. If you would visit the forbidden city in China, there is a hill inside it. And on that hill, these lonely women can go and look out into the far city and ponder their relatives and their parents. Because once you join a harem, you cannot leave the forbidden city anymore for life until you died. And you are not even sure if you will have even one night in your entire lifetime with the king because the king had thousands of wives. And some of those are his favorites that he would keep on calling so probably you will never have even one chance for one time with this king. And your entire life is dedicated to that vocation, keeping yourself pretty and beautiful just in case you might be called. If you were living in abject poverty, that would be your ticket out of hunger. But when you're not hungry anymore, you begin to be more sophisticated and you begin to know the more sophisticated concepts of life like boredom or loneliness or meaninglessness. And this is what many of those women are consigned to bear all their lives. That was the life in the harem. And because there was fierce competition among the women for the king's affection, you can imagine all the intrigue, all the jealousy happening in that harem. And peopling that harem and running that were the eunuchs. You know what happens when males do not become full males and yet do not become real females? There is a lot of uh, psychological displacement. 
And so most of these eunuchs are worse than the women when it comes to gossip. They're indulging themselves in all kinds of unsavory and unfruitful intrigues. That was the life in the harem. But the harem was off limits to men. Only the eunuchs could go there. And that's exactly what King Xerxes was trying to break. Actually, you might think that Vashti was breaking from tradition, but it was the king who first did it. There was precisely a hall for the women to keep them away from the men. Now, the king was breaking that tradition and calling his wife to be paraded among the men. So he was the first to break with tradition. He was not alone in that department because Queen Vashti also broke with tradition, and that is, she did not go when the king was calling him. Although this event would open a door for another woman to become a queen called Esther, and many of you know this story, you must never forget that Esther also broke all the rules. The irony was that they wanted a better woman to replace Vashti, meaning a more obedient woman. You know the story. Esther had a more dramatic break from tradition. If Vashti refused to come before the king, Esther did the opposite. He came, she came without being called. Bawal din yun. So nakakatawa ang ginawa ng mga lalaking ito sa pag-iwas nila na meron na namang reyna ang hindi masunurin, ang nakuha nila lalong hindi masunurin. At lalong binaligtad ang mga batas na ginawa nila for one reason. And of course, we have the bias for the people of Israel. So we celebrate that reason that Esther was able to break all the laws and all the traditions of Persia and Media. But both women, Vashti and Esther, were the same. They broke from tradition. Esther 1, 21 to 22, the king and his nobles were pleased with his advice. So the king did as Memo Khan proposed. He sent dispatches to all parts of the kingdom, to each province in his own script, and to each people in his own language, proclaiming in each people's tongue that every man should be ruler over his own household. Now tradition became law. You must take note that this wasn't the prophets doing this. This was not the people of God doing this. These were the wise men of this Gentile nation. And so they made it a law that every man will become the ruler of his household. Naturally, the men were pleased. Imagine the reaction of the women. Esther 2.1 Later, when the anger of King Xerxes had subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what he had decreed about her. Sober, Xerxes remembered the beautiful, the principled, and the very strong Vashti. And he remembered his own weakness, aggravated by being drunk. He remembered his very unfavorable treatment. Yung babae na kahit sa kanya ayaw sumunod dahil ayaw niya iparada siya sa harap ng mga lalaking laseng, this woman was demonized. And the king remembered his own decree against this very remarkable woman and inevitably against all the women of his realm. Pero hindi na niya yung pwedeng bawin. May kasabihan ng utos ng hari, di mababali. Hindi lang yung kasabihan. Yon ay legal truth sa Persia. As was cited in Esther 119, the laws of Persia and media cannot be repealed. Pag naging batas na, hindi na pwedeng bawiin. Kwento. Ganun. Ano ngayon? Anong mapapala natin sa kwentong ito? Halos dalawang libo, limang daang tao na ang lumipas. We should see what men can do when drunk. Ano nangyayari sa mga lalaking laseng nawawalan ng mabubuting asawa? Pinapahamak ang kanila mga asawa at mga anak. May isa pang lalaking laseng, hari din, almost many thousands of years afterwards. No, mga 500 years later. More or less. King Herod. You remember King Herod throwing a party? And in the middle of this party, 
Herodias, the wife, made her dance, made her daughter dance. This young woman danced so well, or the king was so drunk, or both, that the king declared before everybody, Ang galing mong sumayaw, ask for me for anything, even half of my kingdom I'll give you. Sabi naman ng babaeng clueless, Mami, ano pong hihingin ko? Hingin mong ulo ni John the Baptist, asar sa buhay natin yung propeta na yan. And so, bumalik ang babae, amin na ang ulo ni John the Baptist ilagay sa plato. Herod was horrified because, first of all, John the Baptist was known to everyone as a very righteous man. And he was very popular. There could have been a revolution just because you killed him. But the king gave his word. And so John the Baptist was beheaded. Mga lalaking lasing. Husbands, huwag niyong inihahalo ang inyong asawa sa inyong mga drinking bodies if you drink. Dapat kasi, hindi na, no? Pero kung sakasakali man, huwag niyong hinahalo ang asawa niyo sa mga kumpare niyong lasing. Tapos pag may nangyaring himala, nagtataka kayo. Diba? Ang mga asawa nyo sa tahanan, sa bahay, yung mga kabarkada nyo yung lalaki, keep them away from your house. Dalo kung mag-iinuman, inuman kayo, magkukong ano-ano kayo, tagaluto nyo ng pulutan si misis, paparaparada dong nakashorts, nakasando, pag nalasing kahit nakatulog, naghimala ang langit, pagising nyo, wala na kayong asawa. Nagtaka pa kayo. Tapos mga habol kayo ng taga, ng baril, Ang mga lalaki, may asawa, iniingatan nyo inyong asawa, inyong tahanan, hindi kayo papanik ng papanik ng kung sino-sino mga lalaki sa bahay nyo. Lalo mag-iinuman kayo doon. Pinapahamak nyo ang kababaihan, ang kanilang dangal, dahil sa inyong mga bisyo. Dapat ganun. Nakita nyo itong hari na to, ang tinutinunong hindi lasing, nung nalasing kung ano-ano pinagkagawa. Pati sarili niyang asawang napakatinong babae, ginawa niya ng batas. Laban sa babae yon. Ephesians 5.18 do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Huwag naglalasing ng ganyan. Nawawala ng bait, nasisira ang kaisipan, gumagawa ng maraming mga kamalian. Proverbs 23, 29 to 30, Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has heedless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger on wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Sino daw ang magkakaroon ng mga lungkot, mga gulo, mga away, mga reklamo, mga pasa, sino mga namumula, mga mata, yung mga lasenggo. Mahilig maglasing. Siyempre, marami na equivalent yung mga alak niyan. Kasama na ngayon yung mga drugs at kung ano-ano pa. Sinisira, hindi lang ang sariling buhay, kundi ang buhay ng kanyang pamilya na dadamay. See what men can do when boasting before other men. Pinagyabang niya itong hari. Gusto niyo ba makita ang asawa ko? Napakaganda. Alam niyo, pag nagyabangan na ang mga lalaki sa kapwa lalaki, napapahamak ang kabuhayan. Pag magsasabong, palakihan ang mga pusta. Pag nagsusugal, ako, taas-taas ng mga pride, ayaw umuwi na talunan. Lahat na napahamak. Jeremiah 9.23 This is what the Lord says, Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches, or the husband that has a beautiful wife boast of his wife. Misan may wisdom din yung mga kaugalian ng mga Arabo, yung mga babae, tinatakpan ng mga kumot, mga telang itim. Pag kami mga party, nandun sila sa kabila, nandito yung mga kalalakihan. Misan meron din yung wisdom ha. Kasi alam niya naman ng tao ay tao, kung minsan ay pag mga nalalasing, naiiba na ang mga ugali, nagkakaroon na ng mga paghahangad na nung mga matitiluang isip ay wala doon, kaya nagkakahalo-halo ang balat sa tinalupan. James 4.16, As it is, you boast and brag, all such boasting is evil. At sa pagyayabang na yan, kaya nagulo ang buhay ng mga dapat sana ay tahimik. Note what the powerful can do for self-gratification. Yung mga advisors, they had access to the ears of the king. Anong law ang isinulsul nila na gawin at pirmahan? Yung law that only preserved their interest. Sabi nila, aba, mahirap yan. Isipin ninyo, kung mga amasona mga ito at mga babae naman yung gumagawa ng batas, 
gagawa naman sila ng anti-mail laws. Kaya yung mga extremism, yung male chauvinism at extremist feminism, pareho yan na hindi bagay sa sibilisasyon. Kasi parehong extremist. Yung iba naman naging feminist, hindi lang para itaas ang kalagayan ng kababaihan, kundi para gumanti naman sa kalalakihan. Mali pa rin. Kasi kung ikaw ang naging makapangyarihan, di ikaw naman yung mga api. From inaapi, ikaw din yung mga api. Di mali pa rin. Ang kailangan, balan. Sabi ni Solomon, a man who fears God will avoid all extremes. Hindi ka dapat na nagpapalakas para maghiganti. Nagpapalakas ka lang para iayos ang kalagayan ng mahihina. Pero para maghiganti ka, ikaw naman yung mga api, gagawa ka ng panibagong henerasyon ng mga api, sila naman yung gaganti sa susunod, di na matatapos ang gulo. Yung mga gumagawa ng batas, tingnan nyo ang walang kahihiyang kongreso ng Pilipinas. Kung gumagawa sila ng mga batas ng mga, ay, bigyan natin ng mga sarili natin ng allowance, pirmahan lahat. No? Lakihan natin ang ating mga allowance, pirmahan lahat. Naghihirap ang bansa, naghihingalo ang sangbayanan. Tapos gawasoan lang ng mga gawa ng batas na sila ang nakikinabang para sila mga linta na sumisipsip sa dugo ng bayan. Wala namang pipigil kasi sila ang gumagawa ng batas. Eh kasi kayo, boto ng boto sa kanila. Pasensya tayo lahat. Kaya dapat matalino ka sa pagboto, hindi lang yung maganda, yung asawa, kumakanta, iboboto mo na. Sapagkat oras na nandun na sila sa kapangyarihan, ginagawa nila ang mga batas na siyang lalong nagpapalakas sa kanila. Kaya hindi nagiging maunlad ang sambayanan. Kailangan maging marunong ang mga tao. Nung araw, hindi mo masisisi ang sambayanan kasi monarchy yun eh. Namamana yung pagiging hari at reyna. Eh ngayon naman, ibinoboto. Kaya dapat marunong ka namang bumoto at marunong ka mag-isip. Kaya tayo naghihirap, mangmang ang mga bumoboto. Hindi nag-iisip, hindi bagay ang demokrasya sa bayan na ito. No? Kasi ang boto na bibili sa isang salup na bigas. Pinagbibili ng mga taong boto nila. So yung mga pinakamaraming pambili, yung mga pinakamaraming nayan na nakaw, sila na naman ang mananalo. Kaya nag-iisip-isip na tayo, wag lang reklamo, wag lang Tapos dasal lang dasal sa luneta para ipagdasal ang bayan. Hindi masama magdasal, pero alam mo dasal lang ang gawin mo. Kailangan kang utak mo paandarin mo dahil Diyos ang may bigay niyan. Pag hindi mo ginagamit ang utak mo, tinatalikuran mo ang Diyos na nagbigay ng utak. Tapos pagka nahihirapan ka, dasal ka ng dasal, sasabihin mo sa Diyos, baguhin niyo po, baguhin. Eh, ikaw ang nagboto dyan eh, di ba? Kaya pasensya ka. Kailangan mag-isip-isip ang mga tao. But these people were oppressed because they could not choose their leaders. Kaya ang Biblia, punong-puno ng katuroan sa mga taong makapangyarihan. Ephesians 6.9 And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. And there is no favoritism with him. Ang daming utos ng Diyos addressed to the powerful. Katulad lang nung Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Sabi, don't work. Not your maids. Not your servants. Not your helpers. Give them a day off. Sinong kausap doon? Hindi naman yung mga empleyado. Yung employer. Ephesians 6.4 Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Yung mga power structures. Una sa economic system, economic and political system, and social system, there were the masters. May mga nobles, may mga aristocrats. Nagkaroon ng mga landlords, nagkaroon ng mga mayayaman na mga kapitalista. It's the same thing. Sabi ng Panginoon, maging mabuti kayo sa inyo na sasakop. Tapos ang susunod na pinagsabihan mga tatay, because this is another source of power structure, the family system, where a patriarch rules. Dito kayo, dyan kayo, di ka mag-aasawa. Itong pag-aaralan mo, ganitong gagawin mo. At napakaraming naaapi sa ganitong sistema. Kaya nagtuturo din ng Biblia, mga tatay, huwag niyong asarin ang mga anak niyo. Sabi nga, do not exasperate your children. Huwag niyong ubusin ang pasensya nila sa inyo. Kailangan maging mapagmahal kayo. And 1 Peter 3.7, Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayer. So yun palang mga husbands na nang-aapi ng asawa, your prayers are hindered. You see, yung mga nakakapang-api sa kapwa, yung socio-economic system headed by the masters, yung family system headed by the fathers, at yung husband and wife relationship headed by the husband. Doon ang gagaling ang napakaraming abuse, kaya doon maraming turo ang Biblia. At si Jesus, bidaligtad lahat yan. 
Kanino siya nakikipaghapunan, kanino siya nakakananghali, kanino siya sumasama. Hindi sa mga masters eh. Doon sa mga empleyado, sa maliliit na tao. Hindi dahil pang doon lang siya, pero binaligtad niya, nilagyan niya ng balanse. Yung mga nang aaping templo, inaaping yung mga makasalanan, doon siya ngayon nakikipaghapunan sa mga makasalanan. Yung mga bata no, na hindi pinapansin, kinakawakawawa, nung ayaw palapitin sa kanya, kinalong niya, binless niya. At yung mga babae na laging puwera sa lakaran, puwera sa mga mahalagang event, yun ang kalakaladkad ng Panginoon sa napakarami niyang lakaran. Kaya si Mary, na kapatid ni Martha, nakaupo sa kanyang paanan kasama ng mga lalaki, sabi ni Martha, yung kapatid ko naman, papuntahin niyo sa kusina where the women belong. Sabi ni Jesus, no, 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 she belongs here with the men. She has chosen the better portion. She likes to learn. Perhaps she likes to be a disciple. Let her stay here. Nakita niyo yung ginawa ni Jesus sa balancing act. To give honor to those who were forever being ignored, to give attention to those who were not being given attention, and to affirm yung mga latak ng lipunan, people who were falling in the cracks. Yun ang kindness ni Christ. Yun dapat ang kindness ng Christianity. And look what advisors can do for and against the advisee. Nung nagtanong si Harry Xerxes, Anong dapat gawin kay Queen Vashti? May nagbulong. Hindi siya sumunod sa iyo, patalsikin. Eh kung may nagbulong, ang buti-buting asawa, gusto niya sa iyo lang pakita, hindi sa iba. Gusto niya ikaw lang makakita ng legs niya, makakita ng kanyang balikat, ng kanyang sakong. Oo nga, ano ang tinunang asawa ko? Di ba may isip mo yun? Pero ang nagbulong kasi, hindi kasi nunod. Ikaw ang hari, hindi kasi nunod. Alam niyo yung mga advisors, mga sul-sul din yan. Madalas, nakakarinig tayo ng advice sinusunod natin. Pero, hindi natin nadinig yung kabila eh. Dapat balance eh. You know the great imbalance? Wala naman lalaki nag-advice. Wala man lang babaeng tinanong, eh, yung dangal ng babae yung nakataya doon sa buong istorya. It was a one-sided trial. Kaya iniiwasan nyo din dapat mga kapatid na laging sumusunod sa payo agad. Titingnan nyo, ano ba yung kabilang side? Sino ba yung may kontra payo? Kasi hindi naman kontra payo, susunod ka na. Pero may sana alala mo, oo nga pala, there's another side to all this. Job 21.16, I stand aloof from the counsel of the wicked. Now, the wicked can be the malicious. The wicked can also be the well-intentioned but ignorant wickedness pa rin na magiging bunga ng payo nun. Anong naalala ni Xerxes? Naalala niya yung mga gawa ng mabuting babaeng ito. Tayo ba naalala natin ang gawa ng mga mabubuting tao sa ating buhay? Na bago tayo magpasya kung anong gagawin natin sa kanila, iniisip naman natin, ano ba mga ginawa niya sa akin? Naalala niya eh, kaya lang huli na, napirmahan na niya ang batas na hindi pwedeng bawiin. Kaya mga kapatid, dahan-dahan sa pagpirma. Kaya kahit may ikinakasal ako, yung pirmahan na, siko, sigurado kayo, gusto niyong pumirma, pwede pa tayong umatras. Hindi po, gusto-gusto na po namin. Pwede pa, gusto umatras. Hindi po, gusto-gusto na talaga. Pero mamaya, after three months, paano po ba maghihiwalay? Yan, at dali-dali niyong pumirma eh. Mag-isip-isip. Psalm 1.1, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. No woman's voice was heard or consulted. Tapos sasabihin nila, yan ang kalakaran. Itong si Vashti, Reyna naman, alam niya ang mangyayari sa kanya. She knew what she would lose, but perhaps also she knew what she would gain by making a stand. Sa atin pong kultura, sobra nating ipinagdiriwang yung pakikisama. Meron tayong nalilimutan na ipagdiwang eh, paninindigan. Isa rin niya napakahalaga, manindigan ka rin. Nanindigan si Queen Vashti. And I propose, just at this moment, don't judge her story vis-a-vis -vis Esther's story. Magkunwa tayo, hindi pa natin alam ang mangyayari kay Esther. Yung kwento pa lang na ito ang ating tingnan, it will stand for itself and by itself. Nakikita nyo, hindi naman masama ang ginawa ni Vashti. She decided. She made a stand. But something is lost. And something is gained in every decision, in every move we make.
Tiyakin natin na sinusuri natin ang ating mga pasya sapagkat sa bawat pasya na ginagawa natin, siguradong may mawawala sa atin at meron din tayong mapapala. We lose something, we gain something. If it's okay to you to lose what you're about to lose, then decide so. But if it's not okay for you to lose what you stand to lose, then never mind not gaining what you want to gain. Dapat alam na alam natin ang uuwian ng ating mga pagpapasya, ng ating tinatanggap at ng ating tinatanggihan sa buhay. What is important is to know what is truly valuable to you and if necessary, pay the price for it. Everything has a price. Pag mahal na mahal mo, gustong gusto mong isang bagay, dapat willing ka to pay the price. Hindi libre, walang libre. Gusto ko itong tindang ito, magbabayad ako. Gusto ko ang pagmamahal mo, susuklian ko. Gusto ko ang attention mo, bibigyan ko rin ng attention. Genesis 29:18 to 20. Jacob was in love with Rachel and said, "I'll work for seven years in return for your young daughter, Rachel." Laban said, "It is better that I give her to you than to some other man. Stay here with me." So Jacob served seven years to get Rachel, but they seemed only like a few days to him because of his love for her. Sa panunuyo nitong si Jacob para makuha niya maging kabiyak itong si Rachel, pitong taon siyang naglingkod. Pero sa tingin niya, ilang araw lang yon, kasi gano'n ang pagmamahal niya. Pagmahal mo, willing ka dapat magbayad. Willing kang mahirapan. Willing kang magsukli. Hindi gusto mo na lang libre. There is always a price to pay. Even salvation is free, but not cheap. Jesus paid. Laging may bayad. Hindi kumpleto ang transaksyon pag walang bayad. Maging si Esther later on sa kwento na ito, kung sinabi natin na lumabag itong si Queen Vashti sa kaugalian na hindi siya lumapit sa hari, si Esther din lumabag sa paglapit naman. Kasi bawal ka rin lumapit kung di ka tinatawag. Esther 4, 15-16 Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai, Go! Gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Sabi ni Vashti, I will not go to the king. If I perish, I perish. Sabi naman ni Esther, I will go to the king. If I perish, I perish. Pareho lang sila. Pareho mga babaeng may paninindigan. Pero anong lesson? Meron ka palang paninindigan eh, willing ka dapat magbayad. Hindi pwedeng makuha mo yung gusto mo, tapos wala kang bayad. Meron lagi. So powerful people, let us just repeat, avoid getting drunk. Yung mga taong walang responsibilidad, walang kapangyarihan, walang mawawala, hindi pa rin tamang malasing, pero mas pwede kayong malasing kesa yung may pananagutan. Kasi sa bawat pagkakamali, maraming nadadamay. Kung kayo'y presidente ng kumpanya, presidente ng bansa, gobernador, executive, manager, kayo ay tatay, kayo ay supervisor, meron kayong pananagutan, huwag kayong magiging palalasing, may mapapahamak. Ecclesiastes 10.16 Woe to you, O land, whose king was a servant and whose princess feast in the morning. Ibig sabihin kasi nung araw ng servant, walang training, walang edukasyon, walang refinement. Sabi ko, ang inyong mga prinsipe, umagang-umaga pa lang, mga lasing na, party na ng party, kawawa naman ang bayan. Sabagat mapapabayaan. Huwag padala sa yabang, sa kantsaw, at sa pambubuyo ng iba. Ecclesiastes 7.5 It is better to heed a wise man's rebuke than to listen to the song of fools. So be kind to all people under you. When you have power or influence, do not be hasty in making decisions. Do not be hasty in signing anything into law. Kung hindi kayo impartial, huwag kayong tatanggap ng mga imbitasyon na mag-judge ng anumang contest. Pag tinanggap nyo yon, sinusumpa nyo sa langit na kayo magiging impartial, papapanalo ninyo yung dapat. 
Ngayon, kung meron kayong mga paborito, paborito meron kayong mga gusto papanalunin, huwag kayong mag-judge doon. Because you will be judged. Proverbs 19.2 It is not good to have zeal without knowledge, nor to be hasty and miss the way. Huwag nagpapadalos-dalos. Kahit sa ministry, sabi sa 1 Timothy 5.22, Do not be hasty in delaying on of hands. Huwag magmadali sa pagtatawag ko, ikaw, ministro, ikaw, propeta, ikaw, pastor, kasi maraming nabibigyan agad ng ganong office, kengkoy pala. Biglang gagawin niyang biro ang buhay, kung ano-ano pinagagagawa niyang mga himala, eh meron na siyang public office, kawawa yung mga tao. At lalo na, mga kapatid, huwag ipang-display ang wife. At ngayon din, kahit husband, huwag ipang-display. Huwag ipang-display si boyfriend at girlfriend. Usapan niyo, uy, ang ganda naman ng babae na yun, pamparada. O talagang pamparada ka lang sa mga family reunion, ang ganda-ganda mo, pero hindi ka naman talaga mahal. Ang hirap din kumisa kung maganda ka, kasi hindi mo alam kung mahal ka lang o gusto ka lang iparada. E eh ngayon, kung talagang wala ka kagandahan, tapos may nanligaw sa'yo, tiyak na tiyak mong mahal ka. Pero pagka maganda ka, hindi mo na alam kung bakit ka napapansin eh. Object ka lang ba o hindi. And what's important, brothers and sisters, as we ponder this story, know who is truly valuable to you. Pag nakatagpo kayo ng tao na very valuable, precious, ang husay, ang galing, may prinsipyo, dapat yung pahalagahan. Kahit pa nga sumasalungat sa inyo, kahit pa nga paminsan-minsan, hindi sangayon sa inyo, pero dahil ang pagsangayon niya ay nakabase sa prinsipyo, pahalagahan niyo pa rin yung tao na yon. Wala namang kwenta yung oo na lang ng oo kahit na kabalbala na lang oo pa rin. Meron ba man lang isa, dalawa, tatlo sa buhay niyo na talagang mahalaga? Pahusay. Matatawag niyo, itong taong to gem talaga. Pahalagahan niyo para hindi mawala. Kasi bihirang nangyayari sa buhay ng tao na nakakakuha siya ng pearl of great value. Anong sabi sa mga parables ni Jesus? When you find a pearl of great value, you sell everything you have just to buy it so that you can have the pearl of great value. Pagka daw ikaw ay may nakitang kayamanan na kalubog sa isang bukid, ibebenta mo lahat yung bukid mo, mabili mo lang yung bukid na yon na kinakalagyan nung kayamanan na nakabaon doon. It's not important to have quantity. Quality is important. Obviously, this woman was of great quality, but the man lost her. Only to have a wife who will do the same thing and break tradition and break the law for another agenda that was not really the agenda of the king nor the kingdom that he was ruling. But that's another story. So who do you condemn? Katulad nung buong grupo na yon nag-usap, i-condemn si Queen Vashti. Pag nag-uusap-usap tayo, kayo na mga kaibigan ninyo na magkakakampi, do you condemn anybody who is right? who is ahead of your time? Do you condemn anybody just because she or he is a genius? Hindi nyo lang maabot ang iniisip, sobrang talino, iko-condemn nyo na. It's easy for us to condemn people we don't understand. Alam nyo yung mga nagiging heroes later on, tsaka lang naiisip ng mga tao, ay, hero pala siya. Because most heroes are ahead of their time. Advance ang pag-iisip. Hindi pa sila naaabot nung nandito ngayon. Pagtagal, pag nag-isip-isip nila at nilingon nila yung nakaraan, doon lang nila marirealize, ay, advance pala siya. Ngayon lang natin naintindihan yung dati na niyang pinagsasasabi pa, pero pinatay na natin siya kasi advance siya eh. Who do you listen to? Who has access to your ears? Kadalasan ang ating mga pasya, tama man o mali, depende kung sino ating pinakikinggan. Kaya mahalaga pinipili ang pinapakinggan. Anong mga batas anong mga patakaran ng ating pinaiiral na hindi naman nakabase sa matinong pag-iisip, kundi nakabase lang sa mga simbuyo ng damdamin sa ating mga impulses. At kung binsan naman, mga kapatid, nagiging vashti tayong lahat. Isa-isa tayo nagiging vashti pa minsan-minsan. Dahil gumagawa tayo ng tama, dahil tayo naninindigan, tayo pa'y napapahamak. I like to emphasize that the Bible did not pass judgment on Vashti. Neither will I, and I hope neither will you. Walang sinabing masama o mali ang ginawanya. Pero tingnan yon na lang for its own merit. 
babae ka, asawa ka ng hari, ipaparada ka sa mga laseng, tumanggi ka, ano naman na masama doon? Napaka-importante na tingnan natin sa mga kasaysayan na ito kung sino tayo. Tayo ba yung nanguhusga? Tayo ba yung nangbubuyo? Tayo ba yung nagyayabang? Tayo ba ang nagiging biktima ng mga taong laseng na nagkataong kapamilya natin, kaibigan? Ama naming Diyos, sa mga paalalang ito, sa mga kwentong ito, ituro niyo po sa amin kung sino kami o kaya kung sino-sino kami. Makita namin ang mga ginagawa naming tama at mali at nawahawag kaming maging katulad nitong si Haring Xerxes who lost a very, very fine wife just because he made a wrong decision. Because he was drunk and he listened to the advice of those closest to him. Turuan niyo, Panginoon, ang manaig sa aming buhay, katwiran. At nawa, Panginoon, umuayos, gumanda palalo ang buhay namin dahil napag-aralan muli itong kabanatang ito sa Biblia. Magbulay-bulay tayo, mga kapatid, pag-isip-isipan kung ano pa ang mensahe natin ng Diyos. Mensahe para sa atin na personal, para lalo tayong makinabang sa pag-aaral na ito. In silence, bow before the Lord and listen to the voice of the Spirit.